Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. I know I've been on a freaking roll. Like, what is this, three episodes a week? I just feel like I have so much coming through me right now, and I just want to upload it all to the podcast and share some good content with you all. So I am back. Happy freaking Monday. So as of today, we have officially entered launch season. At the time of this recording, well, actually at the time of this release, I have just started the Breakthrough to Abundance workshop. So hopefully you made it inside. And if so, I hope you're enjoying the content in there. And the doors to the Manifestation Babe Academy are officially opening next week, next Monday on March, or March, geez, Catherine, February, okay? Pregnancy brain. Do not listen to my pregnancy brain. February 28th. And not only am I so excited to welcome a brand new group of souls who are so excited to transform their lives entirely by truly embodying what it means to be a manifester, what it means to be a creator, what it means to be an architect, right, of your life. I'm also so excited for the initiation that the MBA launch is for so many of you. And I actually see it as an initiation. I see it as a portal that we open up only twice a year sometimes once a year, that just puts you on the path to creating a life that you are so, so proud to live. And I am so proud of this program. I spent six entire months working on it every single day in 2021. And all of my students who have seen both versions of MBA, the very first version, which was only four weeks long, I don't know how I crammed so much into four weeks, but (laughs) since then I have expanded it and upgraded it and made it into a 20 week journey that you get to go on. And it is just my baby and it's something that I'm so proud of. And I cannot wait for you if you feel aligned with it this time around to experience. So since it is launch season as we speak, it's initiation season, transformation season, portal season, I wanted to dive into a topic that came highly requested that I don't think I've officially made a podcast on yet, even though it's a topic that I talk about over and over and over and over again inside of MBA that has been so transformative, not just for me, because of course I've experienced my program firsthand myself and it's what got me to where I am today, but also has been so transformative for all of my students. And all my students talk about how this topic was like the light bulb, the light switch that went off for them that really helped them manifest the life that they actually wanted, not just the one that they thought that they wanted. So consider this an intro We're going to get into shadow work, baby, at least my version of shadow work and how I begin to teach it inside of MBA and then let MBA be the deep dive. So after this episode, if you're like, F yeah, Catherine, I want to dive deeper and of course learn about like hundreds of others of other topics, you can go to manifestationbabe.com slash MBA. So that's M as in manifestation, B as in babe and a as an academy so manifestationbabe.com/mba 
to get on a wait list. And then you'll be the first one to know exactly when doors open. You're going to be the first one to get that email. You're going to know before anyone else in the whole wide world knows because you're on the wait list. Um, We're going to open doors and then you're going to be able to snag your spot as well as our open cart bonus, which is always so good. People hate missing out on our day one bonus. And every other bonus that I release, um, you know, from Monday up until Friday, you're also going to get. So there's a benefit to being one of the first, and that's one of the benefits to being on the wait list. So if you feel called, again, manifestationbabe.com slash MBA. Okay. So WTF is shadow work. (laughs) All right. A lot of people talk about it, ask about it. Um, people have questions, how to do it, what is it, why does it have to sound so scary? So I want to just give you guys a really nice, like well-rounded intro and share it from my perspective and how I have integrated it and of course how I teach it. So we hear about shadow work all the time, right? And it's often talked about in the context of like facing something really scary right? Something really dark and scary and sinister. And it sounds intimidating because we, first of all, we hear shadow work, right? And in this day and age, in the spiritual world, in the manifestation world, we really put emphasis on positivity, on light, love and light, right? Only light, only positive vibes. And so, which of course actually further perpetuates the need to to do shadow work, but that's a whole separate and sort of, you know, I'll integrate that as well, conversation. But shadow work is not intimidating at all. And I want to take the intimidation out for you and show you why this is some of the best work and most important work in your manifestation journey that you could ever do. Why? Because most manifestation teachings out there, they ignore the shadow. And it wasn't really until so much later in my manifestation journey that I started to do shadow work. And it wasn't actually until I started to sit in ceremonies with plant medicines that I actually was forced to do shadow work. And from the healing that I experienced, And the beauty that came out of facing darker aspects of myself, I've never felt more freedom in my life. And it taught me how much I was repressing and suppressing and how I really wasn't being my most authentic self. And of course, I always share this, your most authentic self is the self that is divinely destined and designed to be the most successful. So if you're not being your authentic self, then you're missing out on a whole slew of epic manifestations that are meant for you. So most manifestation teachings ignore the shadow, as I've already said. And that's exactly why, excuse me, most manifestation teachings don't actually work for people. That's why you have so much frustration, right? They're really surface level. And I see this all the time. They perpetuate this internal conflict and resistance because they never really face what needs to be faced. And again, I see this all the time because whenever I talk about shadow-like things on my Instagram, I always get comments from people being like, but Catherine, you teach manifestation. Why are you focused on such negative things? And I'm like, first of all, you didn't even read the caption because all of my captions always contain some sort of lesson or some sort of point that I'm trying to make that actually helps you become a better manifester and showing you how I've been able to integrate the lesson. It's never just me like being negative, right? Um, And I'm talking more specifically about like the body shaming post that I made recently. I don't know if you've seen it, but when I announced that I was pregnant on TikTok, I got some comments from people being like, oh my God, with a belly like that, I can't believe you're even shocked that you're pregnant. It was just like a whole thing. And I was talking about how it really triggered me at first. And I recognize that these triggers are just leading me more and more deeper into what is still unhealed within me. And that is the basis of shadow work. And some people misunderstood that and were like, but Catherine, you're just focusing on the haters. And it's like, no, 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 no. 
No, we have to dive into our triggers. We have to go into what is still unhealed within us in order to heal it. If we don't dive into it, we can't heal it. And so therefore, it's still perpetuating this internal conflict because we still feel it. The shadow is always felt, right? Even if we don't acknowledge it, there's always something that feels off when we continue to suppress and repress. And so when we talk about manifestation and how manifestation is just focusing on the good things in life and only positive things, like first of all, there is no good or bad. Like there's no labeling. It Everything just is and everything is the meaning that we give it, right? And everything, we kind of have to take everything in our life and put our own spin on it and our own meaning on it to make it empowering for us. And no one else can tell us, oh, but that's disempowering when actually it could be something very empowering and vice versa, right? So it's a very individual journey, just like shadow work is very, very individual. And we're all going to experience different levels of it. So simply said, I always tell this to my students, you can't out manifest your unintegrated shadow self. You can't out manifest your subconscious mind. You can't out manifest what you aren't aware of just because you're not aware of it. Just because it's like it's like hiding things under a rug. It's like you can say your room is clean or let's give a better example. Have you ever like as a kid or young adult when your parents were like, no, you can't go out unless you clean your room. And you're like, fuck, I don't want to clean my room. And so you just take everything and you just shove it in drawers and you just shove it in, in your closet, right? And just pretend just because you can't see it, it's not there. And so therefore your room is clean. But really your room still stinks and is still disgusting. And the feng shui is still off because you didn't actually fold the clothing. You didn't actually organize the closet. It's still messy. You just can't see it. It's very similar to shadow work. So just because you're not aware of it doesn't mean it's not affecting your life. And it really is affecting your life in much bigger ways than you think. So I always talk about the example as well, the analogy or metaphor or whatever you want to call it of like, we can't just like sprinkle glitter on a piece of poop and just pretend that the shit isn't there. We're still going to smell it. It's still there. Yes, it has glitter over it, but like, do we really want it? <laughs> like, I don't want any shit in my life. So just because there's glitter all over it doesn't mean it's like beautiful all of a sudden. So shadow work is about integrating ourselves back into the wholeness of our being, as my shaman likes to say it. Everything is about the wholeness. Everything is about balance. Everything is about acceptance and coming back to who we truly are. That's the whole point of all of this, all of life, okay? So what is the shadow in particular? Like, let's kind of break this down. So the shadow is a term originally coined by Carl Jung. And simply put, this is also how I like to look at it. The shadow is an aspect of ourselves that hides everything that we're ashamed of that we don't want others to see and we also don't want to see within ourselves. So it basically hides what we have disowned. And similar to the metaphor that I just used of like hiding everything in your closet and pretending the room is clean, I see it as like our hidden junk closet filled with our deepest fears, limiting beliefs, unprocessed emotions, past traumas, triggers, and qualities of ourselves that we don't accept about ourselves because they weren't accepted about us when we were younger. So this is part of how the shadow is created in the first place. So the shadow is always a part of us, okay? So it's not like, well, let me get into that. Hold on. Stay with me. So it's pretty much created through this split, right? Because think about wholeness, everything's integrated. And then think about a split happening between light versus shadow. And and think about any light. Shine any light and you'll see a shadow, right? Because like even the sun, when it shines on something, it still creates a shadow. So shadows are always going to be a part of us. But the more that we ignore the shadow, the more we have this defined split between the two, which causes issues and pains in our life. So when we are born, we're all born whole, okay? And then when we die, we die whole again 
because we go back to the spirit world and everything in the spirit world is whole again. But part of why we incarnate into this existence is to experience what it's like to find ourselves again, to come back home to ourselves. And so we're born whole, but this doesn't last for very long because as we're growing up, think about this, as we're, as you're growing up, you become a toddler and your parents start to get to know your personality, right? And you get, you start to get programmed by what is right versus what is wrong. Like what is acceptable and then what is unacceptable. What makes us likable and, you know, create friendships versus what makes us unlikable and create enemies or people who don't like us in school. So think about it. We get scolded for being a certain way as kids, right? And we also get praised for being another way as children. And so as you're growing up and people are telling you, no, that's not good. You can't cry. You have to stay strong. No, you can't be angry. You have to be quiet. You have to be calm. Like all these things, like we're told how we're supposed to be instead of just being ourselves and feeling what we want to feel. And so everything we got scolded for, we made a mental note of, okay, I can't be this way anymore. So I'm going to stuff it down. Or I'm going to throw it in the closet. I'm going to throw it in the junk closet. And everything we got praised for. So when mom and dad said, oh my God, you're such a good girl for doing that or for acting that way or for being that way or such a good boy, right? We really exaggerate that about ourselves. It becomes even more of our personality because we're like, oh, this gets me love and acceptance and this doesn't. And so therefore, I become essentially the split personality where I hide certain aspects of myself and really exaggerate other aspects of myself. And if you think about it, our caregivers, our parents, they are tied to our survival. So of course, we're going to do this. We're not going to say, fuck you, mom. I'm not going to act that way when we're when we're infants or two years old or one years old or whatever, or when we start talking and are able to push back on our parents. Because if we don't, or if we do, we're not going to get fed. We're not going to get clothed. We're not going to get love. We're not going to get connection. It really fucks with us. And so we are literally abandoning ourselves in exchange for that love and connection that we so badly want from our parents, but also is so tied to our survival. So over time, this compounds and we grow up and we start to feel unworthy and not good enough to be ourselves, okay? Our true, true, true selves. And we start to feel this like disconnect. And it happens in different stages and it happens at different times for people. Like for example, I really went through like this existential crisis when I realized I no longer want to be a doctor because my parents really praised me for being into science classes and being a good student, but they really shamed me for being creative, right? And wanting to be like a fashion designer instead, which I, true story, I want to be a fashion designer at one point, but I don't even understand where that came from because (laughs) now that I'm grown up, I'm like, I don't even have a sense of style. Like I literally don't understand clothing, but I have a stylist who helps me. So that's how we make it work. But like, I really wanted to express some sort of creativity, but I couldn't. So shadow work is all about uncovering the junk closet. It's like looking inside and seeing what's in there, opening the door, releasing what isn't serving us, like being like, hmm, this is trash, right? Like this doesn't even belong here. It's not even clothing at this point. It's like unprocessed emotions or unprocessed trauma that if we just release that energy, we can then release that. Um, And then integrating the parts of ourselves back into our wholeness through radical acceptance, like loving the aspects of ourselves that we used to get shamed for as little kids and told that we were too much. So we go from living our lives from this like super polished personality of ours, you know, that's made for society essentially to be accepted by society um, to that has been created by other people to the true selves that we actually are. And the thing is, you guys, is that if you ignore your shadow and you don't do the integration work, our shadow only gets bigger and starts to cause issues in our lives. And people always ask me, well, what issues does it cause if I hide certain aspects of myself? Well, 
This is when you manifest all sorts of unconscious patterns. So I talk a lot in MBA about patterns and how we can identify patterns, unconscious patterns, so that we can break those patterns and create new patterns that are actually empowering us in our life. So here's how it works. At some point, if the shadow only gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, let's think about it in the context of the closet. At some point, the closet can't handle any more shit that you're throwing into it. So at some point, the door is going to burst wide open, right? And everything inside this closet just starts to spill right out, becoming this black mirror in our lives that reflects and projects everything within our shadow out into the world. And it doesn't even take much to do this. Occasionally, the the closet is going to open anyway, and it will start to project. The, the shadow's really good at projecting and deflecting from itself so that the ego can pretend that it doesn't exist by distracting us from its very own existence. So we actually see our shadows everywhere. It's pretty much unescapable. It affects every aspect of our lives. But like I said, the ego does its damn hardest to keep it hidden by distracting us from it. So the shadow is the reason why we have certain unconscious sabotaging behaviors. Like if you're stuck in this loop of self-sabotage without knowing where it's coming from, It's because you are still repressing and suppressing your desires, your fears, your limiting beliefs, things you're afraid of, aspects of yourself, your true authentic self. It's just being suppressed and hidden. You're not being your actual self. So here's some like sneaky ways that our shadow shows up when we're unaware of the fact that we're projecting these things and experiencing them within ourselves in the first place. So like I already mentioned, suppressing negative emotions. So for example, suppressing anger and sadness and shame because we were told that these are bad things to feel, that we should always be happy. And so we stuff it, stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. And then we're like surprised when we lash out, when we get triggered, right? We go from like being really calm and then all of a sudden we just fucking lash out. And I used to do this because I used to be the a professional suppressor of negative emotions. And it wasn't until I dove into shadow work that I learned that it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel angry, guys. I hope you know, and my students know this about me because I've literally showed them videos of me. This is so embarrassing. But if you're an MBA, you know what I'm talking about. There's videos of me literally punching a pillow. <laughs> like aggressively. And of course, I did it more of a demo because if it was like my actual processing, like I'm not even the in the place to turn my camera on in the first place and I'm a lot more aggressive, but I did my best to show a demo as much as possible and like I allow myself to get angry. I feel anger, like rage every now and then. That stems from something, whether it's an old trigger or a new trigger, whatever it is. And I have specific rage rituals that I do where I literally turn on certain songs and I just rage. And of course, I do it in an appropriate way that doesn't harm me or other people or animals, right? There's It's ethical and moral and you know, it doesn't harm anyone or anything. I just take pillows on my bed and I just start fucking punching them. And I do it for 15 minutes and then I feel amazing and I'm no longer suppressing anything. I've released it. And so the lashing out for me has not been something that's affected my life anymore. And it used to really affect my relationships. Um, We also become extremely self-critical of ourselves. So we feel shame for certain qualities within ourselves. By the way, if you hear barking right now, it's Leia in the background. Dogs are playing. I'm home alone. Hopefully you can't hear them. Anyway, so we become extremely self-critical of ourselves. So there are certain aspects of ourselves that we don't like, we don't accept. We stuff them down. And then when we see them in other people, we become really good at pointing out other people's flaws, right? You see this a lot. It comes out in gossip. It comes out in haters, right? Being haters. Haters are just hurt people. They're wounded people acting from their shadow selves. They don't even see that what they hate in other people, they actually hate within themselves. What they're jealous of in other people, they actually desire 
for themselves. What makes them upset in other people is actually something they're upset with within themselves. It's That's what I'm talking about, the black mirror. It's very projectile onto other people. And the ego perceives it as, oh, there's something wrong with that person, right? Think about how this can affect your life with your friendships, with your relationships. Uh, even your, like, for example, being like, oh, there's something wrong with my partner. There's something wrong with my friend. I'm perfect, right? The ego always thinks it's perfect. And so you, when you're acting from the ego, an unintegrated shadow aspect of the ego, then you're like, oh, no, there's something wrong with them. Or in the relationship with money, you know, you become a victim to money. You start victimizing yourself around money. Like, oh, money hurt me, or I'm broke because money fucking sucks. Like money did this to me when really money is a neutral resource. And actually it's how you see money and your own relationship with money and the energy of abundance that it's, that's affecting your reality with money. Um, we are really good at judging ourselves because again, the shadow, we it's in the shadow in the first place because we judge ourselves for something. But how this manifests is we judge other people. Or we place a lot of rules on ourselves according to societal norms and standards, which manifest as placing rules on other people. If we can't be ourselves, we hate other people being themselves. And so we try to control other people. We try to place rules onto them. We try to put them into a box because we feel like we're boxed. But again, we are unconscious to this until we become conscious, right? And as you're listening to this, the fact that you're even in this episode in the first place, you're already doing shadow work, which I'm so proud of you for, because even just listening to this and being like, yeah, I see myself in that, like you are actually becoming aware of your shadow, which is awesome. And you've started this work, which I'm so proud of you for that. Um, Another example, and this affects us in relationships, we don't love ourselves. And so therefore this manifests as a hard time loving other people or a hard, having a hard time having others love us. And so we sabotage our relationships because we don't love ourselves. So no one else can love ourselves. So you can see how this like can really affect your life and how it's very hard to out manifest your unconscious shadow. It's very hard to pretend that it's not there because it actually, if you're aware of it, it shows up everywhere because that door is wide open and the shit is everywhere. So there's two quotes that I share inside of MBA. There's actually many that I put into the shadow work module, but I really wanted to share two of them just to give you guys some food for thought. So the first one is by Marianne Williamson and she shares, Until we have met the monsters in ourselves, we will keep trying to slay them in the outer world. For all darkness in the world stems from darkness in the heart. And it is there we must do our work. And then um, Herman Hess, I think is how you pronounce the last name, H-E-S-S-E, Herman. Um, If you hate someone, and this one, like this one, oh my God, this one is a really good one. Okay, are you ready for this? If you hate someone, you hate something in them that is part of yourself. What isn't a part of us doesn't disturb us. So when I was in certain plant medicine ceremonies and certain circles and, and, and practices that I've done where there's been a lot of shadow work, I have learned the question and it keeps popping up for me as like a guiding principle for shadow work and a guiding principle for me in my life is whenever I get triggered or whenever I feel like, oh, I just don't like that person and I don't know why which again, I'm human, you're human. Come on, we all occasionally feel this way, even if we're enlightened and awakened and fucking woke, right? <laughs> we still feel these these ways. We still feel some type of way. A guiding principle and the guiding question, the most important thing is to be aware of it, is 
what is still unhealed within me that is causing me to feel this way, that is causing me to get triggered, that is causing me to not like this person, that is causing me to judge them, that is causing me to judge myself. What is still unhealed within me? Because remember, the ego is always going to blame someone else. It's always going to take the mirror and face it outward when all you have to do is take that same mirror and face it back at yourself. And remember that everything in your reality stems from the inside. And like my shaman says, the entire universe is within us. Everything is within us. We are whole. Okay. And it's time to start seeing ourselves as this whole. So some like more practical kind of like step-by-step or kind of systematic tips that I can give you of like, how do you integrate the shadow? Like what can you do to start doing this? So like, how can we dive into this important work and manifest happier and more fulfilling lives, which is really the biggest thing that comes out of shadow work? Well, number one is to reframe your relationship with the shadow. So you can now tell that like the shadow, yes, it affects your life, but like it's just like the ego. A lot of people in the spiritual community, they really demonize the ego and what that does to the ego is it makes it act out even more. Whatever you demonize, you really make it grow. You turn into this monster when it actually isn't a monster. It's just a part of you. Like, why would you hate one part of yourself and love another part of yourself? It just doesn't make any sense. So similarly, we must form a partnership with our shadow. So stop seeing it as this like scary, isolated thing. Like, something that helped me is I actually get excited about shadow work because I equate it to freedom. I reframe shadow work to mean freedom to me. Integration of shadow equals freedom. So instead, just see it as like an aspect of yourself where you may need a little more self-love. That's all it is. Like you can invite it into your life. All it needs is a little more love. When you can say, you know what? Even though I'm not perfect, I still love myself. Even though I go into rage and like act like a crazy bitch every now and then, I still love myself. Even though I'm hormonal while pregnant, I still love myself, right? You have to invite in that self-love. Number two, you know, triggers came up a lot in this conversation. So exploring your triggers, noticing what makes us tick can teach us a lot about ourselves. So like I said, triggers aren't bad. They just show us where we still have healing to do. What within me is still unhealed? that is causing me to feel X, Y, Z, that is causing me to believe X, Y, Z. That's where I want everyone to start. Always start there. Going right into the trigger and healing it and becoming curious about it and and not judging it because, again, judgment comes from the shadow. So you can't use the shadow to integrate the shadow, right? You need to use the wholeness to integrate the shadow. So um, being like this non-judgmental observer of just like what's coming up, Instead of stuffing it back down and being like, no, I can't, I can't think about this. I can't face this. No, I have to ignore that. Like a lot in the manifestation community is about like stuffing down negative thoughts. But again, that's not the point. The point is to not address, but like acknowledge your negative thoughts. When you acknowledge your negative thoughts and you're like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for your opinion you'll notice that your mind will start to quiet down. But that's like a whole nother conversation that I can talk about that really helped me with like meditation or really helped me with intrusive thoughts. Um, Whenever I have intrusive thoughts, I instead of stuffing them down or avoiding them or pretending they're not there, I just allow them to come up and I say, thank you so much for sharing. And the moment I say that, it's like my ego got acknowledged my ego felt heard. And so therefore it shut the fuck up. (laughs) It works beautifully. Um, The third thing, like I said before, patterns were a big topic of discussion in this episode. So noticing repeating patterns that keep coming up in your life over and over and over again in the form of things happening or like projections that you're placing on other people and situations. Like anytime you're playing the blame game, that's shadow work that needs to be done. So all of this is just a manifestation of your shadow self. And this is a very strong manifestation because it's a wound that hasn't yet been resolved. And so it's going to keep hurting until you resolve it, until you heal it. So again, in terms of manifestation, our entire vibration is composed of our whole selves. So just because you're ignoring your shadow and you think that if you just focus on the light and focus on what you want to focus on, that 
that's your vibration when actually your vibration is your whole self. You can't just split yourself in half or split yourself in a part and create a whole life from it. I mean, you can, but you're going to be very, very unhappy. And there's going to be a lot of things that get in your way, a lot of blocks, a lot of obstacles, a lot of unnecessary challenges. Like there's challenges that are necessary and there's challenges that just keep coming up because you keep creating them, right? There's there's a difference. So an unintegrated shadow means manifesting all of these fears or all of these limiting beliefs or all of the traumas and unprocessed emotions and qualities we don't accept or, about ourselves out into our realities. And then we don't understand why these old patterns keep coming up over and over and over and over and over and over again. Thus, we could be doing all the right things but not getting the results we desire. Sound familiar? Yes, because <laughs> this is like the number one frustration that people have before they come inside of MBA. And then once they understand this, they're like, whoa, okay, I get it now. Another thing is like a lot of people talk about like the negative aspect of the shadow, but there's actually a very positive aspect to the shadow as well. Because remember, the shadow just hides, like we hide what we think is unacceptable to other people and unacceptable to society. So it's really like other people's determination of ourselves that creates our personality. And so there's a lot of qualities that are actually amazing in our shadow. So if you've ever been taught like that you're too much or you're too loud or like you're too energetic or too passionate or too enthusiastic All of these qualities are showing you your hidden gifts and your hidden talents because you could be using that energy for something. You could be using that passion for something that the way that you were created, like who you truly are and who God made you to be is a fucking gift. So if we are stuffing certain aspects of ourselves in our shadow and pretending it's not there, we are missing out on so much beauty in our life. And then the very last thing is radical self-acceptance. So if you want to experience change and transformation in your life, you must first fully accept who you are and that you're already enough just the way that you are already. That's the very most important thing. The rest is a bonus, okay? Everything that you get to manifest on top of that, everything everything that you get to become on top of that is a bonus and it's a privilege. It's something that you get to do. It's something that you get to experience so that you can have a higher quality of life and a higher quality of joy and a higher quality of fulfillment fulfillment and peace and all of these yummy, delicious things that we get to manifest and create comes from first radically accepting who we already are. So that's my intro into shadow work. I hope um, I explained this very well in as little time as possible, just because I really wanted to make this like an intro, give you guys like all the juice. Um, so that you understand, because like I said, I get so many questions about shadow work And I realized that I don't think I've ever talked about it on the podcast, like straight up. So I'm like, why didn't I do that? Because it's such a big, massive portion of MBA. um, And it's so integrated in everything that I talk about where I'm like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. I need to share this on the podcast as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you had any like aha moments, takeaways, definitely share them with me. I would love to hear them. Um, And again, deep dive with me. MBA is opening next Monday, the 28th of February, not March, Catherine. (laughs) Fun fact, actually, random fact. Brennan booked flights for someone for February. It It was actually last week. And he accidentally booked them for March. So it was like March 8th instead of February 8th. And we're just like, oh my God, like what? Why do we keep mixing up February, March? I have no idea. Anyway, February 28th, the doors to MBA open. I would love to see you in there. We can dive so deep together. Um, This is a portal that's going to open you up to everything you've ever wanted on the other side. The link is manifestationbabe.com slash MBA. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash MBA. I hope to see you there. And I will catch you also in our next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.